The Small Business Show, episode 361 for Wednesday, January 5th. Happy New Year 2022. <laughs> And welcome to the Small Business Show 2022 edition here at businessshow.co, where we are still small businessing every single week. Sponsors for this episode are not someone new. It's an extension, a renewal. We talked about that in the last episode. Shopify.com slash SBS. They're still here with us in 2022. And uh, you got to go check it out. You get your 14-day trial. We'll talk more about the details in a minute. Fantastic service, though. If, if, if that's the only part of it you hear, but hopefully it's not because yeah, there's more absolutely. fantastic service. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, here in uh, still in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. In Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, we're recording this in December. So, you know, we're yeah. predicting the future, which is a dangerous game, folks. It is. It is going to be happy. It's going to be great. I'm, I'm a firm believer in, that our best years are always ahead of us. And uh, it's going to be a great, very productive, profitable and awesome year yeah i think so i think so yeah 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 too. yeah yeah it's good stuff hey um it is, it is good stuff i i was a friend of mine reached out to me the other day and uh and told me about this company that he's involved with and as soon as i learned about it i pinged you on our slack channel and yeah, was like so dude you have to know about this it's called 401 play and i'm not telling you about it because a friend it started this there. I don't know if a friend started it. I think he's just a consultant on it or whatever. I'm telling you about it because as soon as I found out about it, I needed to tell people about this thing. So we all know what a 401k is, a retirement plan where you contribute a certain amount, your employer contributes a certain amount. And, uh, and then it, you know, it goes into your retirement account and you can, you can spend it when you're older. Yep. That's how it works. Yep. That's right. 401 play is a twist on that for vacations. So it's this whole thing that that uh, that 401 play will administer for you, of course, because that's what they're in business for. But just the concept is enabling companies to offer travel as a benefit and the company can do a you know matching account. We were talking. The reason a friend reached out to me is we were talking recently about encouraging or perhaps even demanding that your employees take vacation time. Right. That's we, right. We had that yeah. whole episode about it. And he was like, hey, this might fit in with that. And he's totally right, right? Because by doing it this way, everybody, it's it's part of the conversation. It's not, you know, I've, I've I was going to say I've worked places, but I, I, I'm not all that proud to say that I've managed places and run businesses where when someone came to me for, you know, saying, oh, I want to take this time off. My initial reaction was that of frustration of like, oh, crap, now I got to figure out how to how deal. Are gonna fig- yeah, how are yeah. we going to run this? And, and that's <laughs> yeah. and I and I always apologize if I feel like it's come across that way, because a it, like I I don't actually like to feel that way. But it is just a a byproduct of a small company when someone is going to be gone for a significant yeah. period of time. It's it is a logistical headache. That, ap- that appeared by surprise one day, right? Like that's, that's what it is. But I, we, I don't want to discourage uh, people from taking vacations and taking their time off. It is a good thing for all the reasons we talked about in, you know, whatever that was, I think it was episode, was it 356 or something like that? But uh, so. yeah, but, um, but this idea of making the company part of this, you know, you're helping to fund the employee's vacation a little bit, but you're also just making it a part of the culture and yeah, it's great. It's I, really smart. It, it was, it's a really, really cool thing. I, I was stoked about it. And and what they're doing, I'm they I don't know if there are other companies administering things like this. This is the only one I know about. But there there might be others. But what they're doing is, you know, it, keeping it really simple. The company match, your company can even bonus things that way. Like that's a nice way to take somebody's bonus and say, oh, hey, we've put, you know, an X amount into your vacation fund. Like that's a nice thing because – Giving people cash is awesome, but I would argue that if you give people, let's say, a thousand dollars in cash, and then you give people an Apple Watch or you know something that costs quite a bit less than a thousand dollars, they're going to remember that Apple Watch came from you most of the times that they look at it. Hundred percent. 
that thousand dollars, they will forget. They they remember it the first time, and then yeah. they spend it on whatever they spent it on, and they don't think about it as, hey, that, that whatever I got with that, and it might just be that you know they paid off their credit card balances, which is not a terrible thing to do it's with a thousand bucks. Yeah, but you you know it's not. It, it's a different mindset, and so by contributing, you know, e- even just a little bit to your employees' vacation accounts, it's like, oh yeah, I got to take an even better vacation because my company matched this stuff. And then, the, you know, they've got because they do this for lots of different companies, they have uh, ins with various, you know, travel uh, liquidators and things like that, so they can get you some member-only travel deals and help help your employees coordinate their vacations and you know serve as that travel agent or at least hook them up with the right travel agent and things like that. So I I, I, I yeah, idea. I like it. I'm I'm not sure if it makes sense for us to include here at Backbeat, but it might. Like it well, might you know, it, I, I kind of look at it we talk about as business owners being able to live a charmed life and we talk about affinity points, credit card, mileage, you know, how to upgrade your lifestyle and this is kind of a a way to uh bring in your employees, your team into that, uh, that, that charmed life, if you will, yeah. and share it with them. You know, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like it. It's cool. Now, it's good. an interesting thing happened, Shannon. So they, they have a, uh, you know, they have their website and then there was a YouTube video that my friend also sent me that was just like this little two minute long thing that, you know, sort of walked through with like stick figures and stuff. It was, it was cute. It was really well done. It explained the concept very adequately. No, sure. In fact, more than adequately. So I watched it and then I texted you and then I wound up doing something else. And then as YouTube is wont to do, it started playing another video in the background because that's what YouTube does. And this video was like some w- webinar or something. The sound wasn't great. Like, you know, I'm a podcaster, right? I, you know, and so I immediately hear that, like, there's this woman talking. She's got a great accent. She's Australian. So that was great. And I was, I was saying to myself, this is interesting. I'm, I have, it was like some webinar about the construction industry or something. I had zero interest in the content. I wasn't, I, I, I barely know what she was saying, but I, I was laughing to myself. We often say in the podcasting world, audio quality matters a ton, but your audience will forgive you if there is something else about like the content or the delivery or something that is captivating where they can get past any, any, you know, idiosyncrasies with the audio quality. Right. But generally you don't want to have bad audio, but she did, this woman did, it was like, she was just in a bouncy room, which, you know, happens. Everybody's office is kind of bouncy unless you think about it. And she was far away from her mic. So, you know, it was a lot of this kind of sound and that thing going on. And, um, so I just let it play cause I liked her accent and, and I was laughing at myself about this. And then I heard her say something. She said, and that's when they taught me to stop admiring the problem. And I thought, yeah, it was like light bulbs went off, Shannon. It was like, wait a minute, that phrase. And and then I think their whole webinar was about this. You know, they were like what, what she was saying was, you know, this is great. We've identified the problem, whatever the problem was. And now we're talking all about the problem, but we're not actually talking about how to solve it. And so that is what we want to talk about here today, I think. I like it. All right. Yeah, and and when you gave me that, I was like, yeah, that's really good because we talk about action all the time. And so, you know, the the title for the show, you know, Stop Admiring Problems and Shift to Embracing Solutions. So I think it's great. I think it's a good topic to, to uh, dig deep into. I, I agree, and I am eager to do it. You know what else I'm eager to do, though, Shannon? <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> oh, There's that sound. I love that sound. That sound makes me smile because that is the sound of another sale on Shopify, our sponsor for this episode. Shopify is the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shannon and I have each used Shopify over the years, and they make it super easy because it's designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like us The resources once reserved only for big business, and we get to customize it for our needs with great looking online stores that bring our ideas to life and tools that help us manage our day to day and drive sales. You can make your ideas real with Shopify. They make it super easy. It like, you know, the, the first time I went in, I already knew what to do. 
They, they're they super intuitive with it because they've spent all the time to figure out how to build an engine like that. You don't want to spend all that time to build that engine and you don't have to because Shopify has already done it. And it's not just us. Shopify powers over 1.7 million entrepreneurs from first sale to full scale. And every 28 seconds, you know what happens? Another small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. That can be you. You can do that. Get started by building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience needed. You get 24-7 support so you're never alone. It's more than a store. Shopify can grow with you. So go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now. Man, that's a tongue twister. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to shopify.com slash SBS for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> All right. <Okay. laughs> it is good Those stuff. Those are yeah. awesome. Yeah. They are. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. They, they figured it out. Yeah. They did. They That's that's it. They figured it out. And so there's no reason for the rest of us have to have to. It's great. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So cool. So, uh, admiring problems. We're going to talk about how to kill those today, right? Yeah. Stop, stop, doing, stop that. doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, I, I did, so I'm doing some research on this topic and what's interesting is you find, um, you know, there's definitely some, lots of business studies about this, but it also goes into the realm of just, social concepts and politics that people do this as well big groups do this um and so we're gonna we're gonna jump in here and i, I think it's just really it's a fascinating topic that uh that we're gonna dig into yeah i'm no i'm and, looking forward to it it's a, it like yeah like i said in the intro it's it uh i i it resonates with me because i am does. someone who i love to dissect things and, yeah. I, you know, I, I mean, I love to get to the core of why did this happen? And postmorteming things is is a great can be a great exercise, but it can also feel productive without actually being yeah. productive. That's right. Yeah. And I think that the first thing to do is identify it. You know, are you or is your or your employees, your team, whatever your consultants, are you guys, you know, stuck at just admiring the problem if in and, and i think the the best way to identify it is to be self-aware of this and you know if you're just talking about the same problem repeatedly over and over you've stopped coming up with solutions and trying new things and you are just admiring that problem and i think it's especially inherent in big problems that just seem insurmountable right at, at first glance that how how are we going to get past this and it's just so easy to table it. Okay. We'll come back and address that later. Cause we've got these little things we've got to deal with, but the, it, it, things just keep coming up over and over and over again. And you're going to have to figure out a way to get through it. Um, I, I think one of the first steps in getting through it and not admiring that problem is to break it down into smaller pieces. So it's not so intimidating to try new things. Cause you, maybe you just can't, I mean, it, it just may be, you know, seem very just impossible to come up with a solution for this one giant issue that you've got. But can you break out little smaller pieces of them and identify how you can solve those parts of it, right? By taking <laughs> action, right? Which is what we talk about all the time. This is you. I I always, I often say, not always, I say other things too. I often say, and I like saying that I use calculus every day. And people think I'm crazy because who uses calculus every day unless you're in one of the sciences where that's, you know, something that would be required to actually get right. you through. But what I learned in calculus was exactly what you just described. Take a problem and that up on the surface looks completely insurmountable. And what you do in calculus is you start breaking it down into smaller and smaller problems until you get to a point where it's so small that you can solve them. And then yep. you start putting those little solutions together and they raw ratchet and roll back up into solving the big problem uh, that appeared insurmountable. So yeah, I use calculus every day. That's yep. great. That's great. And then, you know, once you've broken this down into the chunks, use your calculus. Uh, I, you have to recognize 
that process of coming up with the solution and really celebrate it. I mean, you may even have to go over the top, but you're remember that you may not even be focused on what the problem is and solving it. You're trying to solve the problem of how your people think yeah. and the framing that they use. So you're putting a system in place to recognize even small incremental solutions. I mean, remember, if you solve 1% of the problem each week, you know, 25 weeks from now, you're going to have a 25% improvement. So it, it's the little things that you can grind out every day, get your team away from thinking, you know, this uh, grand gesture is going to fix this thing or some brilliant light bulb moment. No, you know, we're going to break it down in little chunks. We're going to solve it. And when we do, man, we're all going to high five, go to lunch, whatever, and really get recognized because then you'll get them going on their own of breaking out little small chunks and say, Hey, I can't solve all of this, but I've got, I think I've got this little piece figured out. Yeah. Uh, and it'll, it'll just happen for you. And when you get together with your group. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. And and you're getting used to them. You know, they're probably not listening to the small business show and hearing us just ram the concept of action, action, action down your throat. Right. They're meetings have a way they take on a life of their own. They're talking, they're this, they're that. And you know, the thing is, Everybody likes to complain. It's just part of the human condition. Right. And it often brings people closer together, right? Because they're sharing the same complaints. They're, oh, this guy's on my team, whatever, <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, look at politics. It, it, I mean, don't look at politics, please, but th that's just one <laughs> example, um, you know, that we they're bonding over the complaints. Point that out. Bring that up to your team. And instead... By celebrating it and and really recognizing it, you want them to bond over solutions. That's way more powerful. And it'll bring them closer because they're actually figuring these things out together and they're going to share in the success instead of just, you know, complaining about everything each time you guys get together. I like it. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I, one thing I, I, I realized as I was putting together these notes and, and when I hit that, I use that political analogy is that it can help you if you realize or at least be aware that there's some people that maybe they work for you, maybe they're a partner, maybe they're a consultant that don't want to solve the problem because if it is the very reason for their existence, right? Look oh. at it. Okay. It's, yeah. If, if you have a, it's, it's different. If they're, if solving the problem puts them out of a job, well, they're not mentally, they're not going to be focused. I mean, look at a government, again, this is my last political comment. Look at government programs. Sure. They often become self-serving in that everyone would be out of a job if they solve the problem because they're done. So it's important that if you, you're looking at this big problem and you're breaking it down into chunks if you're trying to identify resistance is think about this. It, are there people in the group on the team or people I've hired that it, if, if we solve this particular issue, they're going to be, you know, it's going to impact them in a negative way. You, you need to consider that and you have to then frame it different to them or maybe not include them in, in this uh, process where you're trying to find a solution. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's important. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember when Apple, uh, you know, in like whatever it was, 2008, let's say, when there was the the big, you know, financial downturn and, uh, you know, banks were having problems and recession and all of that. And I remember and maybe it was earlier than that. Uh, maybe it was the one prior to that. But I think it, I think it was that one where Steve Jobs took the stage and said, you know, we're all experiencing this. Uh, we here at Apple are going to innovate our way through it. And I really like that idea. Like, okay, we're all just going to work to solve this, not work to own it. And yeah. and to your point, you know, those employees whose jobs depended on the problem existing sort of got their, their, their notice that you need to change your job to depend upon the problem getting solved, which is scary because it the problem scary. existing yeah. is the current state of things. The problem being solved is change, right? New. Yep. Yep. It's something new. Yeah. And it's scary and you might not do it right, but you have to do it. So, well, you could use your, your, uh, two week, uh, trial 
thing. Yeah. Like, you know, that concept that you've, yeah. you've talked about so well on the show here is perhaps, you know, in part of these solutions, you'd be like, okay, we've got this small chunk of this that we're going to try to fix and come up with something. Let's try this. Just try for two weeks and yep. see how it works out. Yep. Even if you know in your head you're going to do it forever, just, you know, you get everybody on board with this trial thing and then you can analyze it uh, and, and, and see how it works. I think another example that of this that Steve Jobs did was when he came back and remember he was on stage, I think it was in Boston, and he was talking about, we have to get away from this idea that for Apple to succeed, Microsoft has to fail, right? Remember when it was this it, big Microsoft It was 100% Apple in thing? Boston. Yes. I, yeah. Yes, I was yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, me too. I was there too. And I can remember going, oh, he's totally right. And there was lots of boos in the audience and everything. But he was focusing, we're going to come up with solutions to work to get this big problem of Microsoft at that time owning the PC, you know, industry and, and just dwarfing Apple. Yeah. Um, that is, we're going to, we're going to do a solution. Not only are we going to fix it, Microsoft's going to invest in us and come up with the way. So it's, it's that solution mindset that you, us as business owners and our employees, partners and consultants, because it's not just the people that no. work for us that we have to fix. This. It's uh, other people as well, especially consultants. You know, a lot of consultants, don't want to fix the problem. That's just their job <laughs> is to, to maintain to, status maintain. quo. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. If, if a consultant gives you advice and you follow it, then you might not need that consultant anymore. And it depends. I mean, I'm, we're using the, the, the term consultant very specifically here. And there are yes. a lot of different roles that consultants fill that could be a long term thing. But if they give you advice and you follow it and it fixes the problem, then then that's the end of that uh, relationship. If, if you hired them to help you fix the problem. Yeah. So if you have those, maybe what you have to do is have that discussion with them. It's like, hey, you know, if, if we can solve this problem, yeah. there will certainly be other opportunities for you here. Right? Yes. And get uh, their buy in. Yeah, right. In the sense that, look, I love, we love working with you. Maybe, it, you know, lots of consultants get recruited to come on as, uh, you know, as employees. So it could, le you know, lead to something else. Getting them on board on a longer vision of their involvement with your company. Uh, even if you're kind of, you know, maybe walking them down the primrose path a little bit, it is important to get their buy-in on fixing the problem that they've been brought in to, uh, to fix. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, the fix is, uh, you know, it's four steps. Okay. Break the problem down into smaller chunks. Number one, you got to get it. In, yeah, you got to calculus in, that sucker. Yeah, yeah, calculus it down, bring it down. Then get your group and you to come up with, you know, one to three solutions that that you can take quick action on to so you can, you know, start. You have to start. Implement those solutions and then record the results that you see, adjust as needed. And then I'll add one bonus step here. Celebrate the heck out of what you just achieve and turn it into a cyclical type of system. And you can uh, you can just grind away at these big problems that seem so insurmountable for you and your team by doing this over and over and over. And you can point it out. It's like, oh, you know, we fix this problem on whatever it is, the facility problem, the staffing problem, the money problem. We got that one. Look how we did that. And you're yeah. just going to do the same thing over and over and put them in that same cycle. This is the solution cycle I, that we are coming up with. I think your bonus step might be the most important one. Because yeah, by celebrating so. the achievement, you are infusing that into your corporate culture that we focus and on change. We focus on the wins, on the solution. And yeah. so it, it, because a solution to anything is change and change is scary. But if you can get everybody to like, like you said, if you can get everybody's buy in on this concept of wanting change, seeking change. You won't call it change. You'll call it solutions, but it's the same thing, right? Yes. <laughs> it's yeah, just, a, right. it's right. a specific example of change, you know? And, uh, I, I, I think there's, I think that's that, I think that's the money shot there. I think that's the one man. Yeah. 
Yeah. I like it. So if, you know, if you've used this system before or you've come up with a different way, uh, how to get away from admiring the problem, we would love to hear from you. Feedback at businessshow.co or come talk to us in our group, uh, businessshow.co slash Facebook. We'll route you over there and uh, you'll find a lot of like-minded folks that are looking for solutions over there. Absolutely. And, uh, thank, thanks for listening and uh, Happy New Year, man. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Make sure you uh, check out our sponsor, of course, at shopify.com slash SBS. And uh, keep living that charmed life, will you?